Good evening, mortal. Don't be afraid. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. You have chosen to be a vampire. But first, do you have the appropriate fee? Just there. Thank you. Hmm. These are very fine. Did your vampire patron give these to you? They look to be rare crowns. English crowns. A fine year indeed. I haven't seen one of those since the 50s. So we have one, two, three, four, five. This will be adequate. Not the most amount someone has paid, I will tell you that, but this will get us started. And do you have your letter of recommendation from your vampire patron? Venetian paper and his wax seal is of a house that is very well regarded in vampiric society. So let us have a read and see what it says. To whom it may concern, I hereby decree that I, Victor Ravenswood of the Highmore Vampire Clan, pledge my mentorship guidance and support to this mortal who wishes to transcend into our undead society. I vow to show them the ways of our society, to teach them the dangers, and to steer them away from any wrongdoing. I pledge this now and forever, and be held accountable for any actions they do that are deemed punishable by vampire law. Sincerely yours, V. Ravenswood. A glowing recommendation. I am impressed. Well, everything seems to be in order. We can get started. I'd like to first tell you a little history about our establishment here. This is the only establishment in the United Kingdom that offers the purest and most reliable transformation into a vampire. Gone are the barbaric days of biting mortals and turning them into a vampire. It is deemed a fetish in our society nowadays and because mortals have romanticised it so much, to the point of nausea, it is often a joke told at vampire soirees or feeding get-togethers. And not to mention that it is absolutely unbearably messy and unsanitary and smelly and your carpets get ruined and not to mention the fairly obvious scars that it leaves, that never truly heal, despite what the so-called plastic surgeons, or should I call them undertakers, claim that they can do. Completely useless if you're trying to run away from a vampire hunter or angry mob, or just blend in with society. But anyway, I digress. Before we proceed, 
I need to make sure that th this is exactly what you want. There's no turning back now. If you do change your mind, you'll end up being food for myself and my colleagues here. <laughs> I'm only joking. Really, who would believe you ever came here? People would think you were absolutely mad and you would be committed to an insane asylum. But really, is this what you want? You're good. Well, in that case, I have a couple of questions that I will need to ask you just for formalities. I'm sure your vampire patron have been, has been over these a million times with you, but I need to for paperwork reasons, so just bear with me. Okay. So, have you started your day to night sleeping pattern? Good. And have you started to sever all ties with friends, family, and loved ones? Good. And have you been replacing your solid foods with the hemoglobin meal replacement shakes? Mm -hmm. Morning, noon and night. Good. Which ones did you get? A positive or B positive? My favourite's the B positive. And have you sold all of your worldly possessions? Mm -hmm. Good. And have you removed all religious spiritual or otherwise artifacts from your household or your new place of dwelling. Good. And have you conducted a land survey on your new dwelling or existing dwelling to check for ancient burial grounds or ancient spiritual lines? Okay, you'll need to do that fairly soon. Um, Time's ticking on a little bit. Okay, so have you removed all toxic substances like garlic, silver, or wooden pointy things from your household? Mm -hmm. um, anything pointy is something that could impale you either accidentally or intentionally, so I would just suggest rounding things off with a, a file or some sandpaper or something, or just removing them entirely. And have you blocked out all of your windows with blackout blinds? Or have you built a purpose um, basement or windowless room to your house to house your coffin? Yes, I understand that you're quite poor, so I imagine blackout blinds would be the way to go for you. Mm -hmm. Or you could use just paint. That could be an option, but it looks a little bit suspicious to the outside world. You can um, buy blackout blinds fairly cheaply now on eBay. I heard that's quite a good place to get them. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something your vampire patron could lend you. Mm -hmm. And have you bought your coffin? Which one did you get? Uh, yeah, that, that's a nice one. Pretty simple stuff. Not very comfortable, I would say. I have the state-of-the-art plush velvet lining, and I've just recently had installed a uh, little mini LCD TV screen on my lid, coffin lid as well. It's amazing. Surround sound throughout, just lush. And have you replaced all your mirrors with vampire glass ones? Yeah, I kind of assumed you're not really a mirror kind of person. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so that's it for questionnaires. Did your vampire patron tell you about your fake death? Mm -hmm. Yes, we will need to give you a completely different identity, completely new. You will need a new passport, a new social security number, driving license, Starbucks card, the works. So for that to happen, we need to stage your death. And for the fee that you paid, it only really covers the very basic uh, 
death and funeral combo package. Um, if you pay a little bit more, you can have like a more elaborate death. Um, but this one just covers suicide, car accident or drowning. Again, if you wanted something fancy, like one of my clients who came in here, he wanted to be pierced through the heart by a stingray. Who, who wants that? That's a little bit imaginative, I would say. So, anyway, would you want suicide, car accident, or drowning? You don't actually have to go through with it, so don't worry about which one you choose. It's just whichever one would be easiest on your family and your loved ones to accept. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and your funeral. Obviously, church services are out of the question, obviously, because you would have to be in your coffin in order for people to believe you are actually dead. So, we can't have you in a coffin, a coffin in a church because as soon as you've set foot, you'd burst into flames. So a crematorium would probably be the best bet for you, but obviously we would pull you out before you actually went into the uh, flames, so to say. <sighs> crematorium. Okay. You will of course get a uh, death certificate from our coroner. He's a mortal who works on the inside and we um, pay him a substantial fee per year to um, issue us our death certificate. So everything will be above board, all in order. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many people do you expect will be coming to your funeral? Despite having tied, um, severed all ties with your friends and family, of course. Okay, so you didn't have many friends, did you? That's a shame. Okay. And what sort of flowers? Okay, that's a little bit feminine, don't you think? Uh, uh, no, absolutely, you can have whatever you like. And do you have a will at all? Yes. Okay, you have to just give a copy of that to our legal department to sort out because any monetary items will need to go to our society, I'm afraid. Mm hmm no, you can't leave anything to your friends and family, I'm afraid. Yes, I know that sounds suspicious, but in order for our society to keep going and this establishment to keep going, we need to, um, you know, have some sort of patronage, so to say. Yes, it's, it's standard procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's fine. Just leave it on your way out, that's fine. Or if you pop in next week. Okay. Okay. Anything else in particular you would like? Uh, sorry, you said black horses? You, you know they're, they'll be extra, right? I personally think they're a little bit tacky, but, you know, we each to, to our own. So, if you think everything is in order, and you have understood everything that I have told you today, if you can just sign this disclaimer. Yes, in your own time, it's fine. This is just to uh, formally bind you to the Vampiric Society. You've understood and read everything that you have need, you need to. You have a copy of the um, Vampire Society's handbook. Mm -hmm. You finished it already. Oh. Well, that's good going. I haven't actually finished reading it yet, but um, good on you. That's good. You must have plenty of time on your hands. But yes, as you know, this book is the do's and don'ts of our society. So, you no know, biting mortals, um, you know, turning in people into vampires yourself, you know, beware of vampire hunters, sun exposure times, you know, all those things. You've read it, you know. So you've signed that now. Is that in order? Okay, excellent. Good. Okay. Good. I didn't know that was like your last name. Mm, that's nice. Okay. Perfect. 
Okay, so in order to stage your death, we will need to actually book that in today so we can start all the preparations for you. So how does a week on Monday sound? Good. You're not doing anything that day. You have to be free for the whole day. Okay, fine. Um, so your death will take place a week from Monday and then your funeral, depending on autopsy, results, coroner, certificates, it'll probably be two to three weeks after that. So I would just clear your calendar for the rest of the month, okay? I don't suppose you're a very busy person after all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will begin the procedure in just a moment. I just need to run through um, the steps that we will be taking first of all. I'm sure your vampire patron has walked you through this a million times, but I have to do it for protocol. So we will drain all of your mortal blood and have that chilled and sent off to the blood banks where it can be purchased by vampiric clientele. Did I tell you about not drinking your own mortal blood? Well, don't, because it is potentially fatal. It leaves you completely weak and vulnerable to vampire hunters, sunlight, garlic, holy water. Not to mention it is completely toxic to you and you could die. So please don't ever make that mistake, okay? So anyway, we will drain your mortal blood to the point of death where your heartbeat stops and then we will transfuse the vampire blood into your system, okay? So, in terms of vampire blood, this is your one and you could only afford peasant vampire blood for now I know that sucks, <laughs> excuse the pun, but in millennia you will eventually strengthen up um, or you can pay for an upgrade. Lots of people do that, um, they can upgrade to royal or even noble blood. It's a little bit pricey but it's definitely worth it, trust me. Peasant blood is just really bog standard lower class vampires, I would say. It's not the purest blood ever, but hey, you wanted to be a vampire so this is all you could afford. So anyway, we will transfuse that into your system and then after that you will go on your merry way and you'll be looked after by your patron for the first year of your vampire life and then after that you're on your own, okay? So, let's get started, shall we? Okay, you comfy? Good. I can hear your heart racing. Are you a little bit nervous? Okay, well, this will hurt a lot, so um, you have every right to be nervous, really. Well, let me just prepare my things. I'll pop on some gloves as well. are thinking, why don't I bite you? If I can hear your heart so well. Well, since hmm, about 500 years ago, no, it's not even that long, I'd say about 100 years ago, the Vampiric Society brought in the uh, new legislation that a vampire couldn't bite a mortal anymore and turn them into a vampire. There were so many lawsuits of recently turned vampires who were suing the Vampiric Society because it wasn't what they wanted um, to be turned into a vampire and really I don't blame them. At first I rejected being a vampire and well if you've lived as long as I have you kind of get used to it but hey I do miss my family and the sun, and the beach, and the sunrise, but hey, that's just me. 
Okay, so how this goes is kind of similar to how you would give blood or how you would have a blood test as a mortal. So I would be inserting a needle into your arm, then transfusing the blood out. And then once you are at the brink of death, I will put um, another needle in your other arm and start transfusing the vampire blood, okay? Mm -hmm. So, any arm, pick one. So we have this very, very fine needle here. You probably can't see it, it's so super fine. Okay, this arm. And this is going to hurt a lot. And you might pass out, which is normal. Um, so don't say I didn't warn you, okay? Are you ready? Just, yeah, stings, sorry. Okay, so now we're just going to bring all oh, the lovely mortal juicy blood out. Um, control yourself, control yourself, control yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, you'll just sit there. You can um, pump your fist if you like, it kind of quickens up the process a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to listen to your heart, just to see when it stops. We don't want to um, bring you to the point where we can't resuscitate you, or the uh, vampire blood can't resuscitate you in the first days of this practice, um, unfortunately, um, a lot of people died um, and we couldn't bring them back, but that's okay because we just drank their blood anyway. That's how it's done nowadays. If you ever wondered why we don't bite people, we just kidnap them and instead they go missing, we drain their blood and, you know, we uh, use uh, the remains to feed our dogs, make handbags, shoes, um, you know, all kinds of things. None of it goes to waste, so it's okay. Um, the blood banks are always full. There's so many missing people anyway, so there's too many humans on the planet. Don't you agree? Anyway, let's listen to your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. A nice deep breath. Just relax, it's like falling asleep. Okay, you're doing really good. You're starting to look a little bit pale. That's fine, just let go. Nice deep breaths. Your heartbeat is slowing down. Good. Yes, a few more seconds now. Just think of all the things you're going to be able to do now you're immortal. Did you know in time vampires have special powers too? Just about there. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Good. He's out. God, what a crybaby. I'm not sure I want this guy in our vampire society. He seems so weak. Alright. Vampire blood in. That looks good. Yeah. Tasty. Okay, vampire blood in. 
Hey, hey, hello. Hey, he's still, he's with, still me. with me. There you are. Congratulations, you're a vampire. <laughs> yes, the um, redness in your eyes that fades in a couple of hours. It's just the sensation of becoming a new vampire. It's just the blood just working its way through your body. It's nothing to be worried about. Mm -hmm. and, and your jaw, you feel sensitivity in your jaw and your mouth. That's fine as well. It's just your teeth just rearranging themselves, ready for your fangs to come through. Again, this is fairly painful procedure, I would say, so lots of rest, lots of um, blood, make sure your fluids are up. You, I would say, take painkillers, but you're a vampire, so they wouldn't work on you, but we have alternatives here in our vampire society, so I would see the pharmacist before you leave. She's just downstairs to the left, so you can just go see her. I'll write you out a prescription, okay? Okay. So, as you acclimatize, um, you will need to eat. So I cannot stress this enough. You will need to have a proper feed in the next 48 hours because if you don't, well, it's pretty bad. You are at your most vulnerable at the moment. So. If you get pounced on by a vampire hunter, or if you're exposed to the sun, it's good night you, because you are so weak and vulnerable. I will leave you a bag of this delicious blood. It's A positive. Oh, listen to it. Oh, that makes me hungry. I forgot to eat lunch today, so I'm pretty hungry right now. This is for you. I've got mine in the fridge. So. Feed on that. Um, as soon as you get home, your vampire patron will have to sub you blood for the next few weeks until you can get on your feet and get a job and get back into society. Um, your vampire patron will have access to the blood banks, um, but I wouldn't outstay his hospitality too much. I've known Victor for a long time and he gets very grumpy very quickly if you kind of um, take advantage of his hospitality, so don't do that. Make sure you uh, get on your feet and start working and make sure to feed. Your body will tell you when you need to. Okay. So you will need some SPF cream from the pharmacist downstairs as well as painkillers and as your skin gradually loses all of its colour and you turn paler, you will need to, I mean it's up to you, but you may need to go and get a spray tan done because um, mortals will think you are um, either a goth or there's something wrong with you if your skin is so pale and you like start to mingle with people. So I would recommend you getting a spray tan done and I know a wonderful um, spray tan therapist over at the Necromance Spa and if you go to her and you say that I sent you, she'll give you a discount I'm sure. So is your vampire patron waiting for you out in the lobby? Good. I'll get him to come and fetch you in a moment. Just, I'll give you a minute just to acclimatise. It's all really like, whoa, a bit overwhelming at the moment. You can probably hear so many more things than what you did. You can smell so many more things. You can see so many more things. It truly is wonderful being a vampire and being immortal. So I truly hope you enjoy life as a vampire. 
like I said, there's no turning back now really, so this is it pretty much. But I hope you enjoy a life, or undead life. I forget which it is, but I guess I'll be seeing you around. Well, probably not because we are in different social circles. I mean, you're clearly a peasant vampire at the moment, and I'm kind of like middle borderline nobility, so it would be very damaging on my reputation if I was seen with you, really. But if I see you, I'll kind of like look in your general direction. I won't talk to you or anything like that until you become noble or um, higher born. Um, yeah, so I'll just see you around then, <laughs> okay? So enjoy immortality and I'll see you next week for your death and the following week for your funeral too. Okay, so enjoy being a vampire. Adios.